my wee journey is now taking me to Sunderland and I'm going to head somewhere significant and chat about, chat about Sunderland but before then the other man we need to talk about we mentioned him there previously Jim Platt Jim Platt James Archibald Platt was born the 26th of January 1952 it's nearly his birthday in Balamone he was born at 19 years old Jim found himself over in Middlesbrough a club where he became a bit of a legend he made 481 appearances between 1971 and 1983 following a few loan spells he left Borough and he returned back to Northern Ireland where he went to Balamina he stayed at Balamina from 1985 to 87 before ending his career at Corian he went on to manage Corian Again, we've mentioned him previously. Um, anyway, he also won 23 caps for Northern Ireland. Jim was a goalkeeper. Quite a few goalkeepers have gone on to big things from Northern Ireland. And they've all gone to the North East. Tommy Wright, Ian McFall, Jim Platt. So, Who's next on the list? A lesser known name in my research was this one Alexander McMorty, known as Eric. So, Eric McMorty was born on the 12th of August 1946 in Belfast. Played for Dundella, and then from Dundella, he went to Middlesbrough. He played at Middlesbrough from 1964 to 1975. He was a midfielder, attacking midfielder, sort of forward player. He made 241 appearances for Middlesbrough and scored 22 goals. He also made 21 appearances for Northern Ireland and scored three goals. So the story goes. That McMorty was spotted by Man United playing as a junior in Belfast and he was invited in a trial. He went over with George Best. Both players, wait here, this, this is typical Northern Ireland. Both players got homesick. Best and McMorty got homesick. I mean, I've heard that so many times. Boys returning home. Homesick, man. It's not very far away. Like the plane today took 40 minutes. I know it would have taken longer back then, but still 40 minutes, no time. I'm currently on the full, full, I think I'll say full road in Sunderland. One of the stands was called the full end of Roker Park. And that's where I'm going next. But obviously Roker Park's not there anymore. But there's something that is there. And when we go there, We'll talk about a Sunderland player. I love this. I was never at Roker Park. I only really started following Sunderland in the last year that they played there. Big Quinny, Nell Quinn, same name as myself. I've always followed his career and that's why I ended up a Sunderland fan. Um, he played here, I want to say here, it's like housing development now. He played at Rook Park before um, the transition to the Stadium of Light. And it's great because the names of the roads and all around here, like Turnstile Mews and Goldmouth Clothes and all that, it's all named after sort of where in the old Rooker Park these places are built. And we're going to somewhere which I think is going to be quite emotional here. 
midfield drive leading to Roker Park close, promotion close and Cork Stand close. I just cannot imagine that this is a football ground. <laughs> Roker Park close. That there will mean nothing to you, nothing. And that was the centre circle, the centre spot of Roker Park. <laughs> it's mad. Um, I'm not going to say too much about this here because it's, it's still raw at times. But big mate Daisy, and I've mentioned him in a few Korean vlogs, um, was a Sunderland fan. And we always wanted to come over to Sunderland and watch a game together. It never happened. Um, he he did go to the old Roker Park and that. His dad was a, a fan of the lads. And just going there and touching that centre circle, sort of just a wee, sort of, a wee nod to him. Um, it's nice. Anyway, enough of that little emotional stuff. We are where Roker Park once stood, and the man who played for Sunderland at that time was a William Lawrence Bingham, otherwise known as Billy Bingham. He was born the 5th of the 8th, 1931, in Belfast. He played for Glentorn. 1948 to 1950. He made 60 appearances and scored 21 goals. He was an attacking player. He then joined Sunderland for £10,000 in 1950. Whilst he played for Sunderland, he also did an apprenticeship in the shipyards. I'm not going, I don't even know if there are shipyards left here. But I'll tell you a wee story. Sunderland nicknamed the Mackums or Mackums. So the word is that basically they made the boats Mackham, Mackhams, the Mackhams, that's where they got the name Mackhams from. There you go, a wee bit of history. So anyway, he made 206 appearances for Sunderland, he scored 45 goals. He left in 1958 after he had a fallout with Sunderland when they signed another Glentoran player, Abby Fogarty. I've never heard of him, I'm not going to talk about him, but there's something to research there, Abby Fogarty. So, after Billy's playing career ended, he went into management and one of his uh, teams he managed was the Blues, Linfield. He only managed them for one year and he won the league, he won the Ulster Cup, he won the Gold Cup and he won the Blacksnit Cup. Blacksnit? Blacksnit Cup? Not what they call it, Blacksnit Cup. Anyway, he was also manager in Northern Ireland at that time. Billy went on to have a manager, managerial career that spanned three decades. And then uh, in his career he went back and managed Northern Ireland. They got the two World Cups. They also won the British Home Championship in 1980. Billy passed away last year with dementia. As I say, I really wanted to come here whenever I find out about this here. Centre circle. I wanted to come here and I wanted just to be in this place. I've seen the videos. Of, of Sunderland playing at Roker. I've, I've heard the atmosphere. I was never able to sort of, never able to witness it. But this is the next best thing, isn't it? Like I'm walking over where the old pitch would have been. And it's great that Sunderland have named the streets around here after we parts of the grounds. Beautiful, it really is. So anyway, next stop, Stadium of Light, and we've got one more man to talk about in our journey. See if you can guess who before I get there. I love this place. Anytime I come here, it actually reminds me of home. Because you hear the seagulls in the sky. It's right at the coast. Uh, it's freezing. <laughs> 
lovely. Honestly, it's freezing, but it's an absolutely beautiful day. Beautiful, crisp winter's day. Can't believe there's no football on this weather. Jobby Crossing. I'm going to finish off this video today talking about two things. One, you seen the wee montage there of the, the, the sort of historical bits on the ground, and there was Johnny Crossing. Jobby Crossing, and he didn't travel direct from here to Northern Ireland or vice versa. He went via mainland Europe, but he played for Derry City and he played for Corian. And he ended up here and then he went to Middlesbrough. Um, his history is phenomenal. You have to read it um, to believe it. He got banned from football. Uh, Derry City <laughs> reported him for taking payments that he shouldn't have been taking, which they were actually giving him because he refused to sign a new contract with him. We've one last man to talk about. And this young man, he's a 20 year old from Ballymena. His name's Trey Hume. Trey Hume has got me tickets for the Sunderland against Middlesbrough match. I messaged him because I was struggling to get tickets. And I thought, oh, you know what, I'll give it a go. And he came back to me and he says, no problem, I'll sort you out. Excellent. So we're going to talk about me, Trey. Trey Hume, he's 20 years old. Played for Linfield and Ballymena. Then got a transfer. Last January to Sunderland. Linfield to Sunderland. And he is playing in the Sunderland first team now. He has made an international appearance for the Northern Ireland first team. He has cemented a place in the Sunderland first team. A Sunderland team who have came up from League One into the Championship, which is one of the hardest leagues in the world. There's Bob Stoko in the background. Class. Here, go close and show it. That's a sort of still there of when Sunderland won the FA Cup in 1973 against Leeds United. Sunderland were in the second division, Leeds were in the first division, Leeds were an all-star team. Class, it's absolutely magic, I'd love Sunderland to do something like that again. Anyway, back to Try, Trey, Try, I don't even know what his name really is, Trey or Try. Anyway, yes. Played his youth football with Balmina and Linfield, signed a professional contract in January 19. Um, came over here to Sunderland where he's carving out a career in professional football. 